Ok. Hey, Rosita, so we are live, finally. Hey. <laughs> so, so nice to have you here. We had like some moments to talk and to chat and to see that we are like united in so many things. How are you? Thank you so much for having me. I'm good. Actually, I had a good night's sleep and for me here is morning. So I'm still with my tea and I'm trying to wake up as though I'm talking to you. But I'm really, really blessed to be here on this podcast. Oh, <laughs> yeah, it's great to have you here. So yeah, this is the first time. This is the first episode of the, um, the Audacious Explorer podcast. And I'm really, really happy to be able to have this chat with you, uh, mostly because we are both Romanians and we had yes. no idea when we, <laughs> when we connected that we were both Romanians and that we have this passion for coaching um, in common, plus the healthy, holistic lifestyle that we are both passionate about. How did you get started with coaching? So my coaching uh, journey started in my third year of college. I'm an engineer. I'm a power engineer. And I was first in my class. So I had envisioned a, a future for me that involved me being a manager, an engineer, a woman in power, but in a different, you know, like a devil wears Prada kind of power. Yeah. That's who I looked up to. And that's what I thought was needed in order for me to be a successful woman in business. So in my third year of college, I was doing too many things. I was volunteering around Europe. I was the HR of a European committee. I was having straight A. So I was always going to school every single day. I had a boyfriend. I was going to school in my second semester. I was going to a business school during fri Fridays and Saturdays. So I really had no days off. And around in June, I started having panic attacks because it was too much, like the pressure to be the best and everything I wanted to. I was actually at that time I was competing to become the HR. So I had to present my candidacy. I was trying to win because at the business school, there was this project to win and you could win actually money and a lot of things. So I wanted to win that. I wanted to keep my straight A scholarship <laughs> and I had to go to US in less than two weeks. So I had to give all my exams faster than everybody else. And at one point after my second exam, I just couldn't. So that night I couldn't sleep. I didn't know what was going on with me. I never, like I read books about self-development, but never, you know, experienced anything like that. And then um, I had to go to a therapist to figure out what's going on with me. And she told me that I'm under too much pressure being a perfectionist and trying to achieve so many things. I've always achieved everything that I wanted, but the price I paid was always too big. Like I always, like I was not eating right. I was always skinny because I wasn't eating. I was always like, I couldn't, everything that mattered for me were my goals and to be the best. And mm -hmm. that really, and that year I had to stop. I had to choose between what I want to do and what I feel like I have to, because I didn't want to disappoint people around me. And it was very hard. And as I was going through therapy, which was something that I was embarrassed to talk about because in our country and usually if, now it's more like normal and it doesn't is not frowned upon but at that time it was like are you like crazy why would you go to therapy like what's wrong with you mm. instead of you know how do you want to get better <laughs> you know like and I know that I was looking at my therapist and I'm like I love your job like you do you work on your own terms you make the, you know money as you want to because you set your own prices you help people you're a people person I'm like I could do that. So in our, you know, I was still, I, at that time, I was also having a business, an online business. I was a fashion blogger and I was pretty successful at it. So I was going to uh, New York Fashion Week, London Fashion Week. My team went to Milan Fashion Week, you know, Paris. Like we've been invited everywhere. And I didn't know what else to do. So should I go in fashion? Should I go in and do engineering? Like what is my path? And then I had Maybe I should do what she does, therapy. And <laughs> yes. I'm like, they're kind of three different things and they're very big and I should have time to kind of pursue them. Yeah. And so basically my... you went to her to, see, to, to seek help so that you can declutter your life. And then you're like, I have a, an idea. I'm going to take on this thing too. I'm going to become a therapist. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So it was funny. And she kind of always told me, you know, you need to go to school to, to become a therapist. You need to go. Well, and I'm like, I want to get away from school. I, I don't ever want to go to school. So <laughs> I need a faster way to be, not you, but to be like you. Yeah. And she was like, there's no such thing. And then I realized, as I realized with a lot of things, 
people will always limit you based on their own limitations. And at that point, after a few months, probably half a year, we had to stop working together because she was starting to limit me because it took her 10 years to become a therapist. So she always pushed on me, you need 10 years to become a therapist. I'm like, no, I will find a way to be who I want to be in my own on my own terms, which is faster. <laughs> like I don't have 10 years, like I need to figure out this in the next year because I, I knew I didn't have a cushion after college. Like my parents were paying for my rent and my some of the utilities and I had to pay for my food and everything else. But that was only until college. So after that, I was on my own. And my parents were very strict about that. Like they told me, you do whatever you want in life. We're never going to stop you no matter what you choose. But you're going to have to do it on your own, which is scary. Like I don't have a job. So I need to figure this thing like fast. So how did you get to coaching from there? So uh, after I quit working with her, I was doing blogging, like in my last year of college, I gave up my tuition, I gave up my scholarship, and um, I focused on blogging, on making money out of fashion blogging. By summer, by the time I graduated, I already started to make money from fashion blogging, and I kept an eye on looking for coaching because I knew therapy is not my thing. I don't want to go to school. I don't want to. I don't want to deal with yes. depression. <laughs> yeah, I don't want to deal with people with depression, with people with anxiety attacks. It's 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 great for people who do it, and I appreciate and I know how hard it is because I had depression cases in my own family, so I know what it means. I know the the work a therapist needs to do. That's not my journey. So I was looking for courses for coaching, and everything that I saw was like super expensive and I'm like how am I supposed to pay that like I have like no money so me and my husband now we both left that summer after we graduated like the day after we graduated we left to us we were like we're gonna figure this out I don't know how but we, we figured this out we got a job like a summer job and two, one month later I saw like a friend of mine was like oh look this is a pamphlet for, for like you know like a coaching school blah 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 and I was like because it was because it came from her and she did a lot of things and I never saw any movement, you know, like all the people that do a lot of things but never do anything with it. I'm like, nah, I don't think it's Red for is, me. Yeah. Nah. <laughs> so I put all like she gave me a lot of magazines. I put them all my nights in and I'm like, yeah, one day I'll look. It took more than a month until I wanted to clean. And I was like, I have to throw this away or to look at them. Like I'm not gonna, you know, keep them here on my nightstand. And then I looked, I opened it up, and I'm like, oh, I don't know. Are you allowed to swear here or not? So I don't want to use Absolutely. Go ahead. <laughs> so I was like, <laughs> I have no rules about that. <laughs> awesome. So I was like, fucking shit, you know, like, this is what I want. Like, that school was everything that I wanted. And that school is um, Institute of Integrative Nutrition. Yeah. And it's in New York. So I sign up the next day. And I had no money. I had no idea how I'm going to pay for it because it was the loan that I took was $6,500. And I still didn't have a job. Like, okay, my fashion blog was making money. But when you think about making money, it was like $100 a month. So that's not like a, a lot of money. But I was like, it's either this or what? So mm -hmm. if I don't push myself forward, what is going to be like? And then we went back home in November because we didn't have money to live here. Like it's too expensive to live here. So we went back home and 2015 was the hardest year of my life. We both like both became what we wanted. We both invested even more. So we, we were that year, $10,000 in debt. And we did not tell anybody how badly we were struggling with financially. It was a month where we couldn't pay rent. Like we had this incredibly tiny apartment. Like it was like a hotel room. I like actually, that's how it looked like. And we managed to build something out of that place. And during that time, nobody knew. Like we were so ashamed because nobody believed in us. Like everybody was like, why don't you get a job like everybody else? And I'm like, I don't want to get a job like everybody else. Because I want to build something that in five years from now, you're going to look and be like, oh, you know, you're so lucky. I'm like, yeah. <laughs> you know, really look. Interesting. Yeah. Were, were you like constantly connected to this mission vision in your in your head, even when you're going through these struggles? Oh, yes. Well, the, the, the mission changed, but 
the feelings did not. So I always wanted to have freedom, like freedom for me. And it still is and will always will be my biggest value. I yeah. want to know that I can do whatever I want to when I want to. I don't, I don't like to be restricted. And then with freedom comes money. I worked in multinationals during my summer in college. I was, I started from the bottom and in three years I ended up to be assistant manager. So mm -hmm. I know what it means to work for a corporation. I know the rules. I know the restrictions. I know the problems you would know with like employees, like the, I just didn't like it. Like I was so nasty. I became this bad person because I would see things at work. I would get, I would take to like them personally, and then I would be upset, and then I would like all the gossip, and I'm like, I don't want that in my life. And I kind of started to blame myself, like, why don't I be? What? I, why am I not, you know, authentic and blah 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 in this environment? Because if you're authentic, you should be everywhere authentic, you know. <laughs> but the truth is, it's. It's not that easy because Absolutely. when you're surrounded yeah. with people that don't share your values, after a while, you're going to become like them, even if you want to or not. Yeah, I guess it's a choice. I was just thinking when you're mentioning authenticity, what is it that you are craving to do <laughs> and to like affirm your authenticity there in that space where you are not feeling at ease? What would it have meant for you? Be authentic. Oh, I tried. I was like, I was still because I became a health coach. So I was still into health, healthy eating and stuff even before I became a health coach. And I did like a project in our office with like a big board. And every time you eat something healthy, you get a happy face or every time. <laughs> and I was trying so hard to change the culture in my office, you know, to improve it, to make it better for people from so many levels. But the resistance was very big because people yeah. don't want change, especially depending on what kind of ages you're working with. I was the youngest there. I was yeah. like 21 and everybody was like 40 plus. Yeah. So, I guess it's also, it might have also been a constant reminder. You know, I see it a lot when it's not only about the change. It's when you see somebody who's like so driven by what they are doing, you're like, who does she think she is? Like, she will see in 20 years, she will have a credit and mortgage and two kids <laughs> to, to think about. And she will forget everything about healthy eating. She will also have McDonald's every other night. True, true that. Yeah. Yes, that's so true. Probably go out from there to where you are at in your life and where is it that you are okay. in your life now? So it took... Uh, two years, two years, a little, almost two years it took to get here. I mean, 2016 was a great year. So now, just now, actually in 2016, we finally managed to pay our debt. I mean, we all kind of paid half in 2015 because that's why we were struggling with because we don't like to be in debt. So, <laughs> and that's something that I teach women. Uh, depending on interest rate, we didn't have a lot of interest rate, but still it was something there you're losing money. So my advice always is pay your debt as soon as possible mm -hmm. and then build whatever. So as we were building our business, we were always pay also paying our debt. So we finished that. Everything kind of stopped because we got married. So my last year, I didn't really focus Thank on... <laughs> Thank you. I didn't really focus on my business. I focused on my expert status, which I wrote my book, which kind of got Yay. published last year. <laughs> And I got married. And then we took the crazy leap of leaving the country and moving to US for six months in different parts of US just to see if it's for us, if we like the nomadic living, if we like to live here, like what do we really want? And I've always, since the moment I got my diploma, I always had coaching clients, always, like every mm -hmm. single month. There was never a problem with, for me. The problem was learning to raise my prices. Yeah. Again, because I had a lot of resistance to that because I thought, you know, like the normal coming from Romania, I already like my first client, I charged more than any therapist I knew. And of course, going up from that I was like, oh my, I felt like I'm asking too much from a country we cannot afford. And then now I'm having my highest paying client from Romania. Mm -hmm. So I learned that there's never, it's just, uh, I'm basing something on my assumptions. That's not Absolutely. true. That's not real. I don't know. I don't know how much money everybody makes. I just yeah. assume that because yeah. a few people make that money, everybody else should. 
And it's also a projection of whatever you you are dealing with at that very moment. I think money issues are very much related with value and what kind of value you are providing, right? And when you start thinking about that, like health coaching, you are changing lives. Like you are literally making people healthier, happier. Is there a price for that? Because like I, I know people who would pay no matter what to feel healthy and to feel joyful every single day. That's true. Well, and I will have to tell you here, now I'm not a health coach. So I started as a health coach, but now uh, after a year of practicing that, and I had like a lot of fun and a lot of success with it because I cured people of diseases they they couldn't be cured. And Mm -hmm. I was like my first year. So it was very rewarding for me from a professional standpoint, but it was not my mission. And it was hard to accept it because I'm like, I've gone to so many hurdles to get here. And now I'm like, this is not what I'm supposed to be doing. <laughs> it's like, like, what? It's not fair, you know, because I had, I had everything planned out. And then I realized that my mission, because what I noticed in my coaching practice, every woman that I worked with at the end, because I work on six months, at the end, they will always change their job, change their career. Mm get a raise, move to a different country. And I'm like, this is something that I should pay attention to. Yeah. Because health, the health part, it's easily like, if somebody works with me in less than two months, they figure they solve it, all their health problems. Like I'm that confident. I know how to do that. I but, love that. <laughs> well, yeah. Like, I have, confidence, right? <laughs> <laughs> well, I have a lot of experience so I can, that's where the confidence comes <laughs> from. But to find your purpose and to find what you're meant to be doing in this world, that's something that I'm like, I can do. I, I'm actually doing that without even knowing, without even setting my goal to do that. It comes naturally to me. So when I started writing my book, because I wanted to become a, a you know, book author, uh, I didn't know exactly what to write about. And I had a lot of ups and downs with my book, which is, I don't want to get into it. But in the end, I wrote a book about people who are young, creative, and overwhelmed for millennial people who can do so many things like you, you know, like dancing, coaching, uh, yoga, like they're all complementary, but they're different. And they don't know what to focus on. Like, what should I do first? Or how should I make money out of that? Is that a hobby? Is that a passion? Is that a job? Like, what's the difference? So I saw the need. I actually spent researching for a few months I had coaching calls with people to see what they need to see where they were struggling with to see what's the common denominator Mm. for all millennials that I interviewed and the common denominator was the same thing they're all ambitious they're all super talented in so many ways and they have no idea what to do (laughs) and um, unfortunately they all had a job in the corporate world (laughs) <laughs> while they were kind of you know thinking about like one day I'm gonna travel the world I'm gonna be a yoga teacher I'm gonna be a coach I'm gonna do that and I'm like yes you're young and you can wait until you're 34 to do that but what if you could do that next year what mm-hmm. if you could do that this year how would it, your life look like in 10 years so I wrote this book for them and as I wrote this book and then I got amazing feedback back I think almost 500 and 600 people got it in less than two months, which wow, was great. <laughs> like unexpected. Like when you write a book, you don't really expect people to get it because nobody knows you, especially if you're a first time publisher. But I knew there's a need for that. So that's mm-hmm. why now all my, like I still can do health coaching, but there are other people that they love doing much than more, much more than I do. So my area of expertise is helping people be successful at life and live their purpose. Like I can find, I can see like even after one session, like everybody who jumps on a call with me, even for a session. And I, again, I take really a lot of pride in this. They find something to do. Like I had a client a month ago. She just lost her job. She was in really like scare, you know, scare. She had that. She had a lot of things. And we talked for one hour. That was it. In less than a month, she got an amazing, amazing job. Her life is kind of almost back together. And she actually emailed me and said, do you need a testimonial? Because I, I can give it for you. You know, you, you changed my life. And I'm like, wow, it was just one session. Of course, this change, if you don't connect it to a plan, it's not going to last. Mm. So yes, I have people who like, 
try to use me for an hour every now and I'm like, let's just jump on a call because you always change my life when we talk to you. And then three months later, they're not in the same situation, but they're in the similar situation when it comes mm-hmm. to emotions. And I'm like, this will happen over and over again if we don't change the way you look at things. So what's your system? How are you helping people? So the, <laughs> well, it's not necessarily... It comes naturally and I'm very connected to my intuition. So it, each person is depending on what I read about them. So mm. I listen a lot and I understand what they want. I see what they want and they don't want to tell me because they're too scared to say it out loud because it's too crazy or it's too, I don't know how. So uh, as I'm guiding them and it's just, I want to know like with everybody, happy, like my mantra is, are you happy, healthy, wealthy, and fulfilled? Like this four things, I believe they kind of make the whole life. So I always ask them in our first session, how is your happiness level from one to 10? Your health, your wealth, and your fulfillment. And then I always ask them, what would it need to change in your life for your happiness level to be above eight? Because I believe that everything that's above eight, is kind of in the balance mode it's like when you you know like in the past the radio when you had to you know tune into the frequency to see what kind of channel you want to listen to and then you kind of find a channel that it's good but it still you can hear other noises yeah then you tune it out (laughs) well after eight it's like you found the channel but it's still noisy in the background you just just kind of dance on it (laughs) but you can't really like (laughs) exactly like it's okay but it's not the perfect yet so then we just tune it until it becomes clear and it's perfect so that's like after an eight and it's interesting to see what people would reply when i asked them that because most of them never thought of it most of them have no idea like i asked a girl Mm -hmm. what would it take she was like a four or five on the on the wealth aspect i said what would it take for you what would need to change in your life so you would be above eight and she's like i don't know said i've made i think a hundred thousand dollars a year and i'm like do you want that do you want that because you think that's a good number because other people are making them number because sometimes we want something but we have no idea what we really want yeah absolutely like what does it look like for you like what does it mean yeah what does it mean to be happy what does it mean plus i'm what i've noticed because after i tried to do this i noticed the difference there's a big difference between joy happiness wealth richness Mm. they're not the same thing and people kind of confused and they have no it's like oh are you joy are you happy are you you know joyful happy (laughs) it's not the same thing they are driven by two different things if you want to go into it i will go into it but it's just I yeah, because the two different things, and then we are gonna move forward to the business part. <laughs> so, happiness, like I kind of re- researched this last week. So, happiness and joy. Uh, a spiritual leader look back into the Greek. Uh, I'm not history, but it's like you know, like how words were formed, yeah. and what she noticed is that happiness comes in the definitions of happiness in Greek comes from something outside of us. So we are happy when we buy a new thing, somebody does something from us. Circumstances change, Mm. makes us happy because it kind of is how we want it to be. So it makes us happy. Joy on the other hand is something that comes within us. It's something that comes from spirituality, something that comes with wisdom, comes with time as you, you know, get more mature and you understand how life works you become more joyful because you look at things differently. So you can be joyful and not happy and you can be happy and not joyful. (laughs) So people think you cannot be one without the other. Yes, you can, because they're different by different things. Like if you have a connection with your spirit, if you have a connection with the divine, with the universe, then you can be in a state of joyfulness every single day, even if everything around you seems to be shitty and everybody will look at you. Oh my God, I think you're freaking out. And you'll be like, no, I'm actually okay. And people think you're definitely crazy. Like you should be freaking out right now. Like, why aren't you crying every day? Or because they're two different things. And whoever knows that, like you can have joyful every day, but mm. happiness, that's really hard to have every day because not every day, everything will be exactly how you wish to it be. Like, you know, like you get everything perfect for you. Absolutely. And if we go after your definition, then it kind of means that happiness is more based on the context, the circumstances, and we don't really have 
power kind of over our exactly. circumstances, right? So like I can't make it sunny. I'm really happy when it's sunny, but I can't really make it sunny every single day. And it's very exactly. interesting because in meditation, I've never literally, or maybe I don't remember, um, I never heard people mentioning happiness. But a lot of monks, for example, the monks that I was meditating with are mentioning joy uh, and inner joy and inner peace combined like coming from inner joy coming from inner peace so it's very interesting maybe it's like that maybe this definition for me this definition really resonates i'm like i just found out the secret (laughs) (laughs) you know that's how kind of it sparked in me yeah cool so you've done a lot of things right and uh, i was thinking when you mentioned this happy healthy uh, wealthy and fulfilled that sounds to me like um like a successful life receipt for you or something of the Mm -hmm. source right Mm-hmm. Yes. Um, and I was thinking, how does success look like? For what, me? Yeah, what needs to happen for you to feel successful? <laughs> Good question. I like that. So um, every month is different because it depends on so many things. Like success for me at this point, like I've reached material success. I reached professional success and I wasn't, I wasn't happy. So Mm -hmm. I was like, okay, maybe success is not what I think it is. And that's why I went to being happy, healthy, wealthy, and fulfilled. So at this point, (laughs) besides my business, which is, of course, is not what I wanted to be because I always, you know, after I get here, I'm like, I want to be there. And then I want to be there. And then So I'm never really staying anywhere because I'm still looking forward to get to the other level. But I think it means to... If I put it in numbers, it means to have a savings account that will last for six months for our current living situation. I would like to have our own place, which we don't have currently. And we don't know exactly where we're going to be this year because we're going to be traveling a little bit in the next few months. And uh, we both realize nomadic life is not for us. Mm. And we realized we really like to have a place to call home and then travel. We've always been traveling. We would travel like four times a year, every year. Even when we were broke, we still traveled somehow. We managed to do it with borrowed money. You have to tell everybody what is your receipt because I know many people who are really, really interested in that. Oh, okay. We'll talk about it. Well, so we now for me, success is to really find my own place to be able to call it home, to be able to design. And I love designing. I love creating. I love, like, I have a lot of hobbies besides my business. And uh, I, for, that's how success looks like for me. Everything else I already have. Like, we have, I worked maybe, I worked two, three hours a day, which in the past that was not possible because I had this, I have to do, I have to do. And I realized I don't have to do. Like, mm-hmm. I believe in manifesting. I believe, like, I manifest everything that I want. Like, seriously, people don't believe this. but people that kind of know me and they are in my group and they, cause we do every week, we kind of, we tell what we want. We tell what the, what, what the universe to offer us. And then the next week we tell what we manifested and people are amazed when I tell them everything that I'm manifesting every <laughs> single day. So I know how to do that. But so I'm, I'm, I live well, I live in peace, which mm. I didn't have in the past. Like I was always struggling and being fear and, anxious what if we don't make it next month because when you're on your own and we have a business we have a lot of uh, business expenses Absolutely. it's hard you never know exactly what am I going to make money next month is it the same is it not and for us last year it was our best lesson and this is something I never shared before because it's still raw uh, after our wedding we lost everything mm. everything and when I mean everything our business was destroyed because we had a contract that just disappeared and disappeared with a few thousand do- thousand dollars. Mm. And we also, my husband um, suffered from an eye problem. So he's still not able to work and it's been four months. So mm-hmm. our, Brilliant. both of our income disappeared. Like I w- wasn't working last year that much. So mm. he made all the money and he made a lot of money. And we were finally felt like we're rich. You know, we finally felt like we can afford everything that we want, which we did. And then at one point, everything was like, no, he couldn't see. So it was a shock to both of us. We couldn't understand what was happening. And um, it was a very humble moment to realize that, okay, we got here. 
what is our next step? And of course, I had like a month of freaking out. I did freak out. So when I hear people, you can read everything, you can work with anyone, you're still going to freak out. You're still going to have moments when you doubt everything because you are so used to everything being so easy. And then it's like, not yeah. it's like, what did I do wrong? And it's yeah. not about doing yeah. anything wrong. It's, it's very just about how that comes, comes up, right? Like for many people, I've heard this, like instantly something goes the other way than what you wanted or expected it to go. And the first thing that pops up is what did I do wrong or why am I being punished? So yes. yeah, how did you go about uh, that one? Well, <laughs> as I wrote in my book, which I had to reread my own book, to be honest, and I'm not kidding. I really had to go back and read my own book and realize what would I do? Like, what did I teach people <laughs> to do? Because I was in a, because when you're in a shock, you mm -hmm. don't think straight. Like, you yeah. don't think straight. You need to get out of that shock. So yeah. I was looking back and I realized I always leaned on the universe. I always knew that everything happens for a reason. That's something that it's my daily mantra. Everything happens for a reason for my highest good. So if this happened, although I didn't accept it, and that's why my suffering kind of took a month because I couldn't accept, I didn't want to accept the situation. I didn't want to accept that we got there. Like we shouldn't have gotten there. Like we shouldn't have, like this should not have happened to us. It's not fair. Like I, I like my thing was like, it needs to be fair. Like I, that was like my whole life. So it's something that I kind of work through. No, I know what you're talking about. <laughs> so I was always the, you know, the judge. It needs to be fair. Is it fair? Is it not fair? You know? So I realized, okay, what is the blessing in this situation? What will we be able to achieve and create in this situation? And oh my God, it was the best time of our lives. It was the hardest, but it was the best. Like I, my success as a coach went off the roof, off mm. the roof. Like I've never been as successful as I'm now. I've never been in my life. I've never been as good as a coach as I am now. I've never met the people that I've met. I've, I've worked with a lot of people. I've, yeah. We've lived in places that raised our vibration. And my husband changed his whole, because he's a perfectionist and he's working with people with perfectionism. And I think for him, the spirit was exactly to find out what perfectionist is from every single angle. Like mm. he works with the coach now. He's been working through, you know, because half of his problem is emotional, half of it is physical. We went to doctors here in US. We went to institutes. We went to, because, and everybody was like, there's nothing we can tell you to do. We don't know why you cannot see. We don't know why you cannot. So it was another slap, you know, like, oh, wrong yeah. <laughs> so we realized it's a lot of emotional issue so he's been working on that and he is this amazing person that just you can see how much he's changed you can see it on his face you can see it in his uh, you know behavior you can see it everywhere so we're both very grateful for that and our money situation improved drastically so when you're in the problem it's very hard to see why this happens or you know what's the benefit of it but as you move forward and if you every day you connect to something that tells you, you know everything happens for my highest good everything happens for my highest good what can I learn from this what can I you know what's the blessing in this situation and if you maximize that I'm telling you it's amazing like we've done things that like we had a choice we could come back to Romania and because we had a savings account a pretty good savings account so we couldn't have been struggling if we wanted to come back home and live you know at my our parents house like we could have done that and save money and that would be okay but we didn't want to do that because that meant we're going backwards instead of going forward so we knew that if this happened it happened for a reason so we canceled our flight and we're like we're gonna stay six months i don't care how i don't care how we're going to make the money or how we're going to eat we're going to stay six months and we're going to figure this out and here we are four months later and like we've had our dream life coming we've been lived in a million dollar home we've been we went to san diego which is our love like we love that place we cannot wait to go back there and move there this year that's our plan to move oh. there this year <laughs> and it's just we would have missed so much mm. if we would have quit and now it's easier because you see you know like you, it's been a few months yeah. We kind of saw what it took us, so it's easier yeah. to talk about it. Now so, you have the yeah. higher land. <laughs> exactly. But when you were hitting in that situation and you're like, oh my God, how am I going to go out of here? Of course, you can't see it. I, I really appreciate you being so honest and like really super real and open about this. Because mm -hmm. I guess m many of us, many of us who are 
uh, at our core, free people do go through this because we are making life choices based on how we want to feel more than what we want to have. Mm -hmm. And because we want to feel a certain way, then we will be challenged to feel some things that will actually clear the path to feeling more of that what we want to feel, like joy. Joy can come if you are fearing all the time, right? So mm -hmm. you have to be through fear to be able to clear the path so that joy can spur. So I'm really, really happy that we had the, the chance to talk. I just um, published now your website, so you can oh. find it on wellfitsyou.com. Yes. Um, and also I'm going to publish, so this will be uploaded on YouTube and in the comments, in the description of the video, <laughs> we will have all the links to your Instagram everywhere where people can find you, maybe your Facebook group too, so that people can join you. Yeah, and also if they want, uh, my the the book is on Amazon, but the the first three chapters I offer for free on wealthy2.com in case people wow. just want to check it out to see if they like it or not. Yeah, that's really cool. <laughs> I'm going to give it a read too. <laughs> ah, thank you. Yeah, cool. So thank you very much. It was For me, it was a really, really exciting experience. I'm really happy that we had the, the chance to, to talk and to exchange a lot of stuff in this 30, 30 minutes. Mm -hmm. I'm yeah. happy to be here. I, it was really nice, of course. It was very um raw like we would had have anything planned we were just okay whatever whatever comes it'll come so let's see what the universe needs us to talk about <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah i think i prefer it that i'm like i had a, a, um, some things that i really wanted to to find out about you and to like share with the people who will be viewing this but then again i really really trust what you said right like the universe brings the people that you need to meet and uh yeah, that thing about <laughs> your vibe attracts your tribe. <laughs> yeah, that's valid too. So thank you very much for being here and investing this time and this lovely energy today. And we will see you on your website. We will read some of uh, the three chapters that you are offering and also on Instagram and in your Facebook group. Is there anything that I'm missing? No, 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 thank you so much. This was really, really, really nice. Just one thing that keeps coming into my head and I really want to tell people, most people want growth. They want more money. They want more happiness. And uh, I want that too. And what I noticed is that if you are at an energy level, which is like here, and you want to get to here in a short amount of time, you're going to experience something that it might not be easy or it, mm -hmm. it's going to be painful. And I realized that. I end up like from a, money standpoint from a like a lower situation in last year because i wasn't making a lot of money because i wasn't working a lot like in my business and then now i'm making six times more money than i've made in 2016 so because i wanted it so badly you know to be successful in this area but it had to take a loss to get me here so fast so when you're asking for growth, it's like, be careful what you're asking for, because growth doesn't always, if you want it very, very fast, something very, very big needs to happen so you can, you know, go yeah. up so fast. So yeah. people just think about it, like how you want success to come to you, how fast you want it, because you will get it. You will get whatever you want to, you will attract it, but it might not come the way you wish it to come. So just... Mm a thought <laughs> trust the universe open <laughs> let it in <laughs> yes okay cool thank you very much Rosita have a very nice morning there in the US <laughs> yes <laughs> thank you so much good night and it was lovely talking to you Anka lovely talking to you too bye <laughs> bye